The Avengers are cultural icons beloved by not only comic book enjoyers and action movie lovers, but sci-fi and drama consumers alike. The perfect mixture of darkness and comedy is just one of the many attributes that keeps us returning to these films to find even more hidden details about the ones we found in our last watch. Everyone has seen the man playing Galaga that Stark points out, but did you catch that he's actually beating his high score? Thought we wouldn't notice, but we did. So here's 20 things you missed in Avengers movies that still surprise us. During the events of Age of Ultron, Thor is wearing a lock of black hair woven into some of his own. Loki, always the trickster, has fooled Thor into believing he did not survive the fight with Algrim on Svartalfheim in Thor The Dark World. Loki is actually undercover as Odin, which Thor finds out when he returns to Asgard after defeating Surtur. Ironically, Thor's gullibleness shows as his reappearance at Asgard is due to his believing that he has just prevented Ragnarok. You cannot stop Ragnarok. In Age of Ultron, Thor is honoring Loki's memory as promised after telling Odin of his sacrifice. Being the kind and sweet-hearted brother he is, Thor is wearing a thread of Loki's hair to memorialize his father. And brother. Loki probably only asked this to add to the prank, but looking back it does make Thor look a little foolish. Or Loki a little mean. According to lore, Ultron is forged out of Tony Stark's memory. This is why in his first revealing he looks like a jumbled mess of Iron Man parts. With each new body, however, the image gets clearer, leaving Ultron's battle form looking like a more human-like Iron Man. His final form, which instead becomes Vision, slightly resembles the face Ultron was rendering. If you compare his battle form to the back of Vision's head, it kinda looks like Ultron. The Ultron bots also share the creepy face of Ultron 1's design. Perhaps Ultron forged them more out of Tony's nightmares than his final form. Each different version of Ultron is definitely designed, however, because the gash on the front of his chest is a direct reference to one of Tony's darkest moments. His vision of Endgame triggered by the Scarlet Witch in the second Avengers movie. Ever wondered where the Hulk's pants came from, or why they don't rip when he turns into the big guy? I can assure you it's not a plot hole, or something we aren't supposed to think about. What do they call it? Willing suspension of disbelief. Well, Uncle Kevin made sure that we didn't go hungry this Christmas, because the answer is in Avengers Age of Ultron. One of the many things that can be spotted in Bruce and Tony's lab is Hulk's super pants. So I guess the two of them developed it in the lab together. Let's be honest, they could probably figure out something as easy as stretchy pants over lunch. Now they can both add seamstress to their resume, along with... Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. Although we may not be able to say the same thing about Bruce Banner. Mantis is an understated character, often showing her most meticulously designed character traits in the backgrounds of shots. When sneaking up on Thanos to retrieve the reality stone, Mantis folds her hands in front of her face, vividly resembling a praying mantis. The Russo brothers wanted to make sure her on-screen representation presented her as bug-like. Not only bug-like, but praying mantis-like, and it shows most clearly in the funeral scene. Fun fact, this is the only time in the whole span of the MCU that Drax the Destroyer wears a shirt. Damn. This was most likely out of respect for the event, but I like to think Anthony and John ask that he wear a shirt to draw attention away from Mantis, who is swaying, as a praying Mantis does, right in front of him. I guess Mantis is most herself when no one is looking. During Thor's depression in Avengers Endgame, Bruce and Rocket go to save him from a life of online bullying from Noob Slayer 69. On their way into Thor's den, you can spot a keg of Asgardian ale amongst some other non-Asgardian beers. Once inside, they find Thor in great shape, celebrating his victory over Thanos with Stormbreaker propped on the wall next to his unboxed vintage Invincible Iron Man and Incredible Hulk Pez dispensers. They finally convince him to come along, but there's a subtle something that you probably missed. We're gonna see Korg and Thor Love and Thunder fighting alongside his gaming buddy, probably without the moss this time since he's more revolution prepped. That's right when he's living in New Asgard with Thor and Meek on a gamer binge, his poor hygiene is represented as mossy growth on the rocky terrain of his arms and legs. I already mentioned Tony Stark's vision from Avengers that foreshadows the events of Endgame and the defeat of the Avengers, especially the breaking of Captain America's shield. But Stark isn't the only one that foresaw the events of Endgame. In Age of Ultron, Thor has a vision of the Infinity Gauntlet with all the stones ready for the snap. This is one of the many moments throughout the Marvel Cinematic Universe that shows the amount of planning ahead that went into this franchise. As each movie comes out, we get to see tiny details from previous movies come to life. We'll probably see details from Spider-Man No Way Home have more meaning after Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Visions are a powerful thing, and from Thor's conversation with Frigga in Endgame, we know that seeing into the future is a strong possibility. I see with more than eyes, you know that. Learning from mistakes is a huge part of being a superhero, but Tony Stark takes it to a different level. He must be Saiyan, because each time he loses, he gets ten times stronger. Who would win, Iron Man or Vegeta? 
In the first Avengers movie, Tony Stark has to manually maintenance one of the helicarriers when there is a problem with a turbine engine. As a result, the helicarriers have been upgraded to rotorless turbines in Captain America Winter Soldier. In the scene where he has to fix that turbine, his suit is overcharged to 312%, presumably left over from when it gets charged up to 475% while fighting Thor. Power at 400% capacity. How about that? While fighting Thanos in Infinity War, Iron Man creates a nanotech shield, but as a result his stomach is left exposed where he gets a stab wound, but by endgame he has upgraded to Wakandan hollow shields. Thanos loves when things are perfectly balanced, as all things should be, but he fails to see any consequences for achieving that balance. Thanos has six adopted children, Gamora, Nebula, Proxima, Corvus Glaive, Cole Obsidian, and Ebony Maw, three daughters and three sons, to keep balance I'm sure. And it stays this way too, because when Ebony Maw is sent to space using the same flushing method used in Alien in an epic team-up between Iron Man, Doctor Strange, and Spider-Man in Infinity War, it upsets the perfect balance of Thanos' children, although I don't think even Thanos was ready for the sacrifice that was needed to restore it. I am referring, of course, to the loss of Gamora and Vormir. Thanos did eventually feel the consequences of his obsession with balance, even if it did come a little too late. After returning from the time travel test in Endgame, everyone rushes to get the results from Clint. In this scene, Scott is standing in the background of the shot holding orange slices. They are probably for Clint because he was gone for so long, and since the time travel was created using the Ant-Man shrinking technology, he would definitely know how to get over any size changing related nausea. Additionally, in Civil War, when Scott is tired from being giant for so long, he asks the group for orange slices, so it's probably not just for the vitamins. Does anyone have any orange slices? Although I'm not sure whatever orange slices do provide would have been helpful since the source of Barton's broken composure was not size changing sickness related. If only there was a fruit that could help people get over the loss of a loved one. There is no one that stands better as a symbol of peace and hope than Steve Rogers, especially when it comes to wearing your honors proudly. When on the time travel mission with Tony Stark, Steve fits right in at Camp Lehigh where they intend to borrow the Tesseract and a few vials of Pym particles. Steve and Tony are wearing disguises to not stand out, but Captain America's doesn't leave him all that incognito. You knew here. Tony's costume isn't far off from what he would normally wear, but he blends in nicely without drawing attention. Cap, on the other hand, takes the time to choose a uniform that still dons the rank of Captain. The two bars on his hat are the markings traditionally associated with Captain in the military. It could be a coincidence, but everyone knows Captain America is boldly proud to be a hero. Ever wonder what the scaly looking material is behind the hole in Captain America's armor during Infinity War? His armor is damaged from the events of Civil War and he has been in hiding since then. The iconic look of the missing star and burn holes is Roger's costume until Endgame when he has the blue scaled armor. The Russo brothers made sure that there were numerous connections between Infinity War and Endgame so that each detail feels the setup and payoff of the whole adventure. The scaly armor is actually confirmed to be Captain America's armor from Endgame sticking out of the holes in the Civil War uniform. I guess Cap just wasn't ready to wear the flag again until Endgame when he proudly waves it in the iconic scale armor. This style is well known as being the look of the armor in the comics. Each of the iconic heroes of the Battle of New York are recruited for the Avengers by Nick Fury, but only Steve Rogers is briefed on an old paper style document. The rest of the Avengers are given the standard holo tablet that would be common among all S.H.I.E.L.D. or Stark affiliated person, but since Steve is still so fresh to the 21st century in this movie, Director Fury opts to give Steve the paper document. This method of easing Steve into modern society to prevent any culture shock is initially seen in Captain America the First Avenger when Steve first wakes up after being frozen. So Fury gave Steve the paper document knowing it would be better for him and that he wouldn't have to explain what holograms, tablets, and computers are. I'm not sure how advanced his living in post sci-fi society classes are. When Thanos is introduced to the Avengers in Infinity War, he tells Loki he knows what it's like to lose, that it's frightening and turns the legs to jelly. The Thanos of this timeline loses to the Avengers when he is decapitated by Thor, not really giving him a chance to feel his defeat. But that Thanos definitely already knew the feeling of defeat before Infinity War. The Thanos of the timeline that they take the Power Stone from does not seem to know defeat yet, and as soon as he realizes he's lost, his legs do in fact turn to jelly. I wonder if there was a battle that Thanos lost between the events of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 and Infinity War that Thanos experienced, teaching him a valuable lesson about defeat. I know what it's like to lose. 
The Battle of New York was one of the most epic on-screen superhero moments we've seen in the new superhero renaissance, becoming the foundation for the story of both Ultron and Endgame. It was the first time in the MCU that aliens attacked Earth, and the first time we saw our heroes look like they might lose. During this battle, the ornamental clock on the front of Grand Central Station is destroyed. As a result, it is replaced with a memorial for the fallen heroes, this time referring to the first responders rather than the superheroes. In Age of Ultron, we see Grand Central Station with a statue memorial reading the Battle of New York and topped with firemen, National Guard, policemen, and a few distressed citizens. Luckily, this memorial could even be created thanks to the heroism of our mighty heroes like the invincible Iron Man. In the final battle of Endgame, the Avengers must quickly recover from Thanos' initial bombardment. Ant-Man quickly shrinks down to avoid the blast, but unfortunately Rhodey's instincts are not so fast. He becomes trapped under some rubble and is unable to get out, especially since he relies on the War Machine suit for some of his motor control thanks to Vision. Speaking of that fight, during Civil War, Rhodey has small robot markings on the chestplate of his armor. These represent Ultron bots that War Machine took down during the Battle of Sokovia. While trapped under the rubble, Rhodey yells, Canopy, Canopy, Canopy! to tell his suit to free him. This is because of Rhodey's background as a fighter pilot. Canopy has code for eject and would be called out to the co-pilot or other fighter pilots to let them know that he needs to eject. One of the main reasons that Infinity War and Endgame are such colossal successes is because in these movies, the score shifted to a much more thematic structure. Old motifs came back in a major way, with each hero having their own theme music, score, or sonic aesthetic. One of the biggest and most unnoticed of these is the music that plays during the climax of Captain America the First Avenger, but it doesn't come back in the way that you think it would. When Steve radios Peggy from the Red Skull's aircraft, he is calling to let her know he won't be coming back to her, but the next time this score plays, the caller is not so honest. As Tony flies into space on Ebony Maul's spacecraft, the same score from First Avenger plays because Tony is calling Pepper knowing this could be his final mission. Ever wonder if Thanos is worthy? Well, probably not since we've never seen him pick up Mjolnir or Stormbreaker, but I think it's safe to say that Thanos himself doesn't really think he's worthy. While fighting Captain America who is wielding Mjolnir, Thanos never tries to disarm Steve by taking the hammer or even stop the attack by grabbing it. He does, however, grab hold of Steve's hand that is holding the hammer, and it works. Now, if you recall the end of Age of Ultron, you'll remember the mechanisms can move the hammer if they are moving something the hammer is sitting on. The conversation between Thor, Steve, and Tony over whether the elevator is worthy enough to lift the hammer is explanation enough for Thanos to move Steve's hand. So if the elevator's not worthy, then Thanos probably isn't either, and he definitely knows he isn't. Clint Barton is a good-hearted family man. He loves his family more than himself, which can definitely lead to him taking the wrong path sometimes, but his willingness to commemorate the fallen is why he is truly worthy of being called a hero. In the end of Avengers Age of Ultron, we see Barton's newborn son, Nathaniel Pietro Barton. Ever notice that middle name? It's actually a reference to the Battle of Sokovia and the hero that was lost that day. Clint feels the strength of familial bonds and the importance of that connection not only with his own family, but for his fellow Avengers as well. Nathaniel Barton's middle name comes from Wanda's brother, Pietro Maximoff, who was fatally injured by Ultron's attacks. Clinton names his newborn child after Pietro to memorialize him, showing the Avengers that no matter the origin, a hero is someone who answers the call. During the climax of Infinity War, Thanos receives a chest injury from Thor as he tries to force Stormbreaker into the Mad Titan's chest. Thor definitely makes contact and punctures the armor. From his face, it's okay to assume Thanos got more than an artificial wound from that. However, when we see him again just before being cut down by Thor, he doesn't have a chest wound at all. In fact, the only physical ailments he seems to be suffering from is the destruction of his arm due to performing the snap. This is because once Thanos has all the stones and is ready to remove half of all life from existence, he quickly and efficiently reverses his injuries, including the chest gash, with the Time Stone. During the height of his finishing move, you can see green sparks indicating the use of the Time Stone's magic. When Thanos, or anyone for that matter, uses an Infinity Stone, it glows up, especially when being used in the Gauntlet. In each situation, Thanos has to consider which Infinity Stone is best suited to solve and conquer the puzzle. Thanos often decides to use the Power Stone for finishers, or to take on the more powerful Avengers. So look closely, because you might see Thanos using the Reality Stone at times you don't expect. Or other intriguing moments like the battle on Planet Titan, where Thanos uses all four of the Infinity Stones he has at the time to defeat Doctor Strange. One of Steven's favorite moves is the Shadow Clone Jutsu, but Thanos takes no time to find the caster of the spell using the unique powers of the Soul Stone. After solving the puzzle with the Soul and Reality Stone, Thanos uses a classic Power Stone finisher. 
Ready for a bonus round? In the first Avengers movie, Hawkeye is forced to use a handgun over his usual bow and arrow, but his firing stance still resembles that of an archer. I guess that's the only way he knows how to aim. Infinity War opens with the destruction of the Grandmaster's ship that was transporting Asgard, and in the destruction it looks like his leisure vessel was also destroyed. Captain America learns from his mistakes as well, because when he returns to the events of Winter Soldier in Endgame, he disarms his past self the same way he was disarmed in Civil War. Bucky is during the end of Infinity War, the birds disappear as a result of Thanos' snap, but after Hulk's snap, the birds are heard returning like the morning sun. As the reinforcements come in, on your left. several sling ring portals open up all over the galaxy. When the portals open up, they start small and grow to a hole big enough to enter. It seems the wasp's instincts are quicker than her patience because she flies through the portal before it reaches full size. That's the end of the list, but after Doctor Strange and Love and Thunder come out, who knows if hidden details will continue to come to life from the old movies. Especially since we've already seen added details like the Ancient One's presence during the Battle of New York. Strange, we alright? 